start now. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for making the time. I think it is good morning for all of us. Um, I understand that we are all connecting from different time zones from where we are. So to our colleagues who are using GMT time, you are at 9 a.m. Uh, the British Standard Time is also at 10, and we, under the CAT, the Central African Time, we are connecting at 11 a.m. So good morning to all of you. Um, just by way of introduction, my name is Uyo Jaiya from the city of Durban, South, South Africa. We are also partners in the food cities. And thanks for making it to this workshop that we are having today, which is centered around the theme food economy. We've got a number of our sister cities who are going to be making presentations today so that they share experiences uh, from their localities. And the intention is that uh, we let the presentations go. And at the end, we will open it up for a question and answer session. And I think we are meeting at this time, quite a very challenging time globally. And I think we understanding that really the system that we are living in is a very complex system and it requires us to really put on our heads and use new innovation and understand systems thinking when we try to solve the challenges that we are facing. And if you look around the world, the biggest themes currently is inflation whether you're looking at America, Europe, Africa, the, the prices of things are just increasing. And if you look as well, we are entering a phase whereby interest rates are starting to rise. And all of these things have got a very negative impact in terms of access to food and food security in the places where there is high prevalence of poverty. And as well, when you look at the food constraints, is the fact that energy prices have increased by 30% over the last year. And we still are suffering from the supply chain constraints which were induced by the COVID-19 lockdown, which have also increased a lot of uh, input costs when it comes to food production. So as I said, um, we are living in a very complex system um, and it requires us to have platforms like this, whereby we share our experiences, we learn from one another, we use this platform for the sharing, and hopefully we can also share uh, our experiences offline and take advantage of these uh, uh, relationships which we have. So, but without further ado, I would want to invite our first speaker from uh, India, city of Pune. Um, it will be led by Mr. Mahav Jatab, um, and his talk is gonna be around the urban food uh, pilot that they had started, um, which was funded by the, um, by the World Bank. Um, and also just by way of introduction that uh, Mr. Jatab is a municipal commissioner at the PMC. Um, and he has uh, been heading uh, the department there of uh, encroachment removal and in the Mad Madai department. Um, and also there's, they're also involved in one of the big re uh, retail markets for vegetables, which stores about uh, 526 stores of fruit and vegetable. And I think we will also benefit from his 25 years of experience in the city of Pune. And he has served at various uh, positions within that uh, city of Pune. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Mr. Jagtap. He would introduce his team and then um, we will give you 10 minutes uh, in terms of the presentation. And in the end, then we can then start to make sure that we stay within the allocated time of one hour for this session. Thank you very much and over to you, Mr. Jagtap. Thank you. Jagtap sir is uh, there? Okay, so at least from the city of Pune, um, the, the lead for the presentation, uh, we hand over to you. 
and then you can be able to introduce uh, who has been nominated to speak today. Thank you. I think he's just joined the meeting. So. Okay. Uh, Jagtap sir, now uh, you can start uh, your presentation. I'm sharing the screen and uh, you can start. Are you? Yes, Ashish, can I start? Yes, uh, you can. We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Yeah, the, good afternoon. Uh, I am Madhu Jagtap, working in Pune Municipal Corporation as a Deputy Municipal Commissioner in uh, Encroachment Remote Department. Also, I am working as a nodal officer for the Urban Food Pilot Project, which is uh, funded by the World Bank. So, uh, welcome to all. Uh, next. Yeah, thank you, sir. We all can hear you. You can please continue. Yeah, yeah. Next. Uh, actually, the Pune Municipal Corporation is the eighth uh, uh, most populated city in India and uh, second in Maharashtra. Uh, the area of the Pune Municipal Corporation is about uh, 500, uh, 529 square kilometer including uh, 34 newly merged villages uh, in Pune Municipal Corporation area. So the population of the Pune Municipal Corporation is uh, 5 million and uh, GDP of Pune Municipal uh, Pune City is uh, 69 billion USD. So the, the area the, including the dense population and fringe area is uh, included in the Pune, uh, Pune city. So next. Uh, Pune Municipal Corporation already have uh, near about 73 markets in uh, Pune city that are the uh, uh, farmers market. And uh, now smart food and nutrition city program is undergoing the partnership of uh, Brahamgam India Nutrition Initiative, Bindi, since uh, 2017. So uh, it is focused on joint, uh, joint learning, experience sharing, and uh, piloting of specific initiatives. So Pune City, as a, a signatory to Million Urban Foods uh, Policy Pact, has been working on the agenda of making the Pune nutritionally smart city. So Pune city as a Ashish next. Under this initiative, uh, survey was done with the help of uh, Gokhale Institute uh, to understand out of home eating practices and uh, healthy diet of uh, household in Pune city. Uh, Pune city is the, the, some part of the Pune city is the cosmopolitan city, some part are the, the is the old Pune. So the, they are the food uh, intake is the different. So uh, everyone, so the, in this uh, campaign, it was found that 60% agreed that unhealthy uh, street food should be banned. 70% wanted fruit and vegetable to be more affordable. Uh, Indian street food is more popular than the uh, Western junk food. Uh, actually, uh, you heard the name Vada Pao, Misad, are the, the that are the food uh, most popular in uh, Pune uh, as well as uh, in Maharashtra also. So uh, it was also suggested to undertake certain measure and uh, policy intervention to improve the food system. Midday meal scheme should take raw ingredients directly from the farmers and uh, nutritional education in school curriculum 
should be included actually uh, uh, pune city uh, has a 5 million uh, population and uh, as per the population the schools uh, we have the, the many schools of uh, government and uh, mid day meal we are providing to these uh, students so the it is uh, required and also the many street uh, vendors are uh, doing their business on the street they are also uh, cooking uh, the food on the street many people are uh, using to prefer uh, this uh, food so uh, definitely we have to increase the quality and uh, some uh, food quality it is required next government of maharashtra started rural agriculture transformation project which was implemented and was funded by world bank uh, thanks to that because uh, it is a good initiative and uh, definitely pune people uh, will like this aim of this program is to improve nutrition intake of the citizen by providing healthy food and adopting suitable policy decisions as a multi level government its uh, objective to build safe food system for pune city improve nutritional status of pune citizens and build strong urban rural linkage for creating sustainable food system next the major component of intervention is that is the one behavioral change communication campaign farmers market upgradation upgradation of existing pmc slaughterhouse and apda registration food and agriculture organization study on health diet and nutrition in pune feasibility of invoking apos cbos as a supplier of food and vegetable for pmc run mid day meal scheme next in ic plan pune corporation will do the awareness about nutrition and safe food in association with all stakeholders of cities like hotels street vendors restaurant general citizen through organizing cap uh, capacity building workshop and training uh, sessions next pune uh, ashish uh, one slide before uh, actually uh, you see the uh, near about 30 1500 uh, hotels uh, are in pune city 1300 plus hotels are in uh, pune city near about uh, restaurant uh, restaurants and 30000 street vendors 23000 pmc employees and general citizens uh, also uh, there are uh, food parks uh, such like uh, saras bag some hong kong lane and uh, various uh, food malls are there so the definitely it is uh, it's a requirement of the pune city next uh, in apologies, ic plan Mr. apologies yeah, we have one yes, minute left in it, if you can also be mindful of that thank you so we'll just add two more minutes so we'll give you Three minutes so that you can be able to conclude. Okay, Thank okay, you. sir. Okay, so I am finishing. Uh, in IIC plan, Pune Corporation will do uh, awareness about the nutrition and safe food. Uh, next, many component of the pilot project is to connect farmer with urban food market with the help of farmers producer organization FPO. So small uh, farmers are coming together and they may uh, they. organize and uh, uh, form fpo and they are providing the uh, 
very fresh vegetable to the city. Next, plan of the implementation it will develop according to the principle of the farmer's weekly market policy, which aim to regularize 26 farmer market and provide them with temporary infrastructure and provide proper sanitation and solid waste facility in the each market. So these uh, vegetables are come directly from the fa farm. So it is very fresh. So the all uh, citizens are prepared to buy uh, from these markets. Amenity space, uh, we have the amenity spaces. So we are giving the amenity spaces for the farmer markets. Along with that, the OTA markets are also available. Some uh, cold storage also available uh, with the PMC. Yes, sir. Mr. Chak Chak, you've gone mute. I'm not sure if you had come to the conclusion of your presentation. Can you, may you please confirm if you are finished or were you just cut off by technical fault? Yeah, on behalf of uh, him, uh, myself, Ashish Agrawal is uh, talking uh, more about this. We have done uh, another major component that is called uh, food and agriculture organization study and on the urban food pilot project. The basic objective is to uh, assess the urban food system and nutrition in the Pune city. So Pune Corporation and for the multi-stakeholder group with a representative of all the government, United States nations, representative civil societies, NGO and private sectors. And through this study, we will uh, validate the information which is gathered through different kind of survey documents. We will prepare the good practices and we will highlight the critical in information gaps and we will promote the understanding among the stakeholder of the Pune city. So, and the uh, and I would like to assure that uh, on behalf of Pune Corporation that Pune citizens are aware about the nutrition values of food and, and hence Pune Corporation is committed to facilitate with all the stakeholders for healthy, safe and affordable food to all the citizens. Thank you to Food Cities 2022 for this kind of initiative and developing learning platform to all global cities. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashish. And I think also to the participants, the presentations will be shared um, in the in our platform. So I think even if there are areas which you might have felt that uh, they were skimmed over, uh, please don't worry much. Uh, the presentations will be shared. Um, so thank you very much, colleagues uh, from the city of Pune. That is highly appreciated. And as I said, if you have questions, please uh, note them down because at the end of the session, we will have about 20 minutes for questions and answers. And now I'm gonna call upon, if we can mute ourselves when we are not speaking, that will be highly appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, then we're gonna go to country Malawi, um, the city of Umzuzu. Uh, we have Ms. Catherine Mzumara, who's the executive director. If we can mute ourselves, uh, colleagues, when we are not speaking. I'm not sure whose line is that, but if, um, thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, so I'm introducing Ms. Uh, Catherine Mzumara, who's the executive director of the WISA, which is the Women in Sustainable Agriculture. She is the project lead for the city of Mzuzu. And uh, Women in Sustainable Agriculture is an agricultural development institute which focuses on empowerment of women. And uh, Ms. Mzuzu herself is a farmer as well, and she's a researcher as well. So over to you, Ms. Uh, Mzumara, and uh, you also have 10 minutes for your presentation. Thank you, uh, thank you Will. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, I can. I'm not sure if the background is coming from yourself or there's another colleague with the mic. Uh, I'm not sure. Good. Yeah, thank you for your so much. Uh, thanks to Puni for the presentation. We've learned a lot from our friends. Um, let me thank one special person from Malawi uh, who has made it possible for us from Zuzu to be sitting here today and to discuss what Malawi is doing and what it uh, is planning to do uh, in terms of food security. 
Uh, I want to thank Mr. Mike Haswell, who is also Malawian uh, Council of the Day 12, uh, and also is our UK based assistant for Mr. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the challenges that we are facing as a city uh, in this journey of uh, making sure that we have a sustainable food uh, systems. Uh, Mzuzu is in Malawi and the northern part of Malawi. Uh, it's one of the smallest cities, uh, maybe in the 20 core cities in the food cities 2022, and probably one of the poorest cities uh, uh, in, the, in this forum. Uh, Muzuzu has a population of 221,000 people. Um, and it has a population growth rate of plus 5.4%. So you can see annually we're growing at a rapid rate. Uh, and this also affects uh, food production and food availability as well. Uh, and 11 0.5% of the Mzuzu population lives, under, lives below the poverty line. And when you talk about the poverty in Malawi, 85% um, of the people in Malawi live in the villages out of the 19.4 million population, 85% of this population lives in the, in the villages and 11% of that population uh, in Mzuzu are below the poverty line, while 52% of the whole population uh, of Malawi also lives under, lives below the poverty line as well. Um, Malawi has a, a GDP per capita income of 530. So it is probably one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, that being said, that Malawi is one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, it gives us so many challenges in terms of food security and uh, food availability. So my presentation today will basically uh, focus on the challenges that we face as a city, as well as what interventions are we putting in place uh, to counter these challenges, as well as what plans are we putting in place as a city to make sure that we have a food security system that is sustainable. So without wasting a lot of time, I'll, I'll I'll just jump into mention what challenges Muzuzu is going through. Malawi as a country that is agro-based, we rely mostly on land-fed uh, uh, agriculture. This means that out of season, the population doesn't grow anything. So between that out of season time, we struggle to find some of the food that can only farm during rainy season. So that's uh, the major problem that we have, that we only rely on uh, land-fed cultivation. Um, I also mentioned about the rapid growth uh, in Muzuzu. It's also affecting food availability and accessibility. And the fact that uh, Muzuzu is located 40 kilometers from the Lake Malawi, which is the major um, supplier of fish to the city. But because of the growing population, uh, the Lake Malawi is also failing to provide enough fish that can be uh, accessed by everyone. Uh, that being said, our fish are very expensive. So very few people will be able to access fish, which is nutritious uh, food when we're talking about nutrition. Apart from that, uh, we also have weak distribution systems due to poor infrastructures. Most of food are grown in, in the rural areas. And our roads are bad. Our infrastructure system is bad. Bear in mind that we are the poorest country in the world. So our, our, our infrastructure is very bad. As I, even just to give you an example, as I'm speaking to you now, I am at a coffee day just because at my house, I don't have a proper network system. It, it comes and goes. So we're taking advantage of the coffee gen, which has a proper Wi-Fi system. So that's how bad we are in terms of infrastructure development. Um, so also our food being grown in the rural areas. There is long distance. The supply chain is very long. For it to come to the village, to reach the town, it becomes 
too cumbersome. And in the process, we lose a lot of food as well. Food waste is high because of these long uh, supply chain systems. Uh, again, we have poor infrastructure markets. Uh, unfortunately, due to some technical problems, I'm not being able to share my screen. So you can see some of the pictures showing how people sell the veggies or the foods in town. Actually, the basically don't have any infrastructure. We just lay down our foods, our veggies on sites alongside the street. We don't have proper markets. Um, so, and that also leads to high waste because our food are not even stored anywhere. It's spread in the bucket, in the baskets, and nothing, no cold storages in our market. So our food, especially veggies and fruits, are easily perishable. And because of poor storage systems, poor storage facilities, we have high food waste. Um, the other problem that we face uh, is uh, currently, Malawi is going a period where we're facing um, a reduction, I can say a declining phase in terms of foreign direct investment in terms of agriculture. Very few companies are coming to Malawi to invest in the agricultural uh, programs or into agri-processing. So we're lacking that aspect because Malawi is a poor country. We need an extra hand to help us farm or process our own food. Um, talking about processing our own food, that's the major problem that we also have. We don't have value adding systems. We don't do anything that we do. It's either we export it as raw as it is without adding value. For example, our farmers would grow, as a farmer, I grow beans, I grow maize, but that beans are exported to South Africa, for example. And they would process it put it in tins and we import it back to Malawi. And, and we import it back to Malawi, the same food that we grow and we buy it at a triple of price as, as compared to what we sold it for. The other problem that we have also is we don't have enough space if we're trying to uh, promote urban agriculture. Do we have enough space in town uh, that the people can use to grow their veggies and foods and be sustainable in terms of food, of food? No, we don't have. So that's another problem that we have. Um, yes, we have in the villages, but as we have already indicated, the challenges that we face transporting food from the villages, from the rural areas to Mzuzu, due to our poor roads systems, it becomes a problem. And on top of all what I've said, all the challenges that we're facing, the major problem is poverty. Because of poverty, people are not able to buy. Even veggies sometimes they struggle even to buy a bundle of veggies to feed their families. And this has caused a lot of malnutrition cases among the under five uh, uh, children in Malawi, especially in Mzuzu. Uh, in, um, just to summarize it, 48.8% of under five children in Malawi are malnourished, under malnourished. Some are, have a standard, standard growth and some are underweight uh, because of uh, poverty and expensive stuff uh, due to global policies and conditions we are not able and things the prices have gone up and Malawi is not able to afford most of the people are not afford even to buy bread even to buy fruits talk of fruits is even more expensive for Malawi to buy a fruit so okay. those are some of the problems thanks. that we face thanks Mr. Mzumara I think um truly appreciated um and we would hope that you can be able to send that your presentation as well. Am I done? Am I out of town? Right yes, here. unfortunately, your time is no, up. I was, um, about, I was about to say a lot of things. I'm sorry. So we would request that you do share the presentation with us so that it can be shared in the platform. But I think we were able to capture the around the access to food and nutrition is a challenge 
and the supporting infrastructure which enables better production of that food. And I think we'll, I'm sure we'll have uh, stronger discussions towards the end. But thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mzumara. Uh, Ms. Mzumara, we truly appreciate it and it's been very informative. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you. And then in trying to keep with time, um, we're gonna move over to the city of Birmingham. Um, I would like to introduce Dr. Rosemary, Dr. Rosemary Jenkins. Um, she is the public health officer uh, within the food systems team. Uh, she uh, works in the public health division at the city of Birmingham. She's also been involved and she's been the lead person in Cook which is one of the main programs of the Commonwealth campaign. And uh, also she is based in the city of London, as I said, uh, so, sorry, in UK. Uh, she obtained her PhD on public health from Imperial College, which is in London. And uh, she has investigated the impacts of food in the UK's government austerity policies. She'll be talking to us about uh, the system strategy and how the food system strategy and how does it play out in the work streams approach. Uh, also for you, the same, uh, Dr. Rosemary, if you can keep within the 10 minutes time. Thank you very much, over to you, thanks. Um, thanks everyone, just showing my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Yes, um, thanks. Great. Um, great. So, hi everybody. Um, it's really great to talk to you today. Um, I'm going to be talking about the, uh, the food strategy that we've been creating here at Birmingham, and particularly how the idea of a food economy fits into that. Um, so, just as a as a plan for this session, um, I'm going to be talking a bit about the context and, and where Birmingham is and what Birmingham's like, um, and then talk how talk about how the idea of a food economy has been included in our ambition for the strategy to have a regenerative food system and also in our aim to build a sustainable, ethical and nutritious food system and a thriving local economy. Um, and then I'll talk about how we've included that in its own work stream um, of food economy and employment. And finally, how we've embedded the idea of food economy across the whole of the food system strategy and talk you through some first steps. So um, here is where Birmingham is. It's right in the middle um, of England um, here. Um, it's, in the, it's in the West Midlands region of the UK. Um, it's England's second city and it has a population of 1.1 million people. Uh, and it's a really, really diverse city um, with people from all over the world. And that is reflected in the food system and the food economy. So there's an amazing food culture in Birmingham. It's really diverse. There's amazing food um, in lots of different parts of the city. Um, but there are also um, problems in the food economy. There are a lot of um, takeaways. You can see on this map, a high density of takeaways in Birmingham and convenience stores. Um, there are also really high levels of deprivation in Birmingham and poverty. You can see there that the dark blue indicates um, areas where people are more deprived. Um, and also there are issues of um, food insecurity and people not being able to afford food um, in the city. You can see that maps on as well to the deprivation in the cities. So the areas which are more deprived are also where areas, um, areas where people are not so able to afford food. And in doing the context of the strategy, we spoke to a number of businesses as well. Um, and they told us that it is challenging to make environmentally sustainable and healthy food an economically sustainable business choice. So it's hard to make food that's good for the environment and good for people, but it's all, that's also good for business. And that's something that we took into account in this, the idea of food economy in the food strategy that we've been writing. And that food, um, food strategy will go to consultation hopefully this week. So um, we started off with this um, ambition of creating a regenerative food system. And you can see the three pillars of that there. Um, so the regenerative food system is where our environment, communities and economy thrive. And so our citywide partnership in this food strategy is to, um, the ambition is to develop a regenerative food system where, uh, which continually evolves and improves our environment, communities and economy. So it's no longer enough with climate change um, progressing in the way that it is to just reduce the negative outcomes from unsustainable practices. And so our eight year food strategy aims higher. It'll seek out regenerative practices, which improve things where possible. 
So we'll tackle the biggest barriers we face to achieving regeneration and partners from across the city will collaborate um, to overcome them and develop a thriving city. And there are three pillars which you can see there. Um, so firstly, regenerating our environment. That will involve creating a future where our response to the climate emergency is visible through our collective action um, to mitigate the impact of our urban food system on the environment. And then regenerating our communities, creating a future where every citizen, no matter their circumstances, can eat an affordable, healthy and sustainable diet. And finally, and most importantly for this presentation on the food economy, regenerating our economy. So that's creating a future where our city has a circular economy and we attract innovation and investment. Creating a future where our culturally diverse food offer is celebrated and our city is a food destination. Um, creating a future where small and medium sized enterprises and independent businesses are celebrated and supported as they thrive and grow. Um, creating a nutritious, ethical and sustainable food offer that is an economically sustainable business choice and where um, a future where employment opportunities are plentiful, where workers are treated well, receive a fair salary, are upskilled and have opportunities for development. And only by regenerating in all three of these pillars um, and creating a positive impact will we achieve a truly regenerative food system. And this um, idea of food economy is also reflected in our aim, which is to build one of the aims of the strategy, which is to build a sustainable, ethical and nutritious food system <clears throat> and a thriving local economy. And so moving on to the kind of meat of the actual strategy, have we actually included this? Um, so just to say that the strategy, um, to give a bit of context, is a strategic overarching document which sets out our focus for the next eight years. And this will sit alongside an action plan that's currently in development. So these, um, the different work streams which I'll talk about, aren't the actual actions that we do, but rather they're the kind of strategic part. They give focus and oversight on the actions that we'll do. And um, in this, we have um, in the strategy, we've got nine different work streams um, with a huge range of things: food sourcing, food transformation, food production, food waste and recycling food skills and knowledge, food behaviour change, food research and innovation, um, and food security and resilience. But for the purposes of um, this talk, I'll just talk about this work stream, which is the food economy and employment work stream, where our objective is to create a thriving local food economy for all and maximise training and employment opportunities. And you can see there are kind of two main aspirations here. So firstly, good food jobs and businesses. That will involve developing Birmingham as a food destination with a flourishing, vibrant, diverse food scene that celebrates the cultural diversity of the city and celebrates our excellent local produce and independent businesses. Um, celebrating businesses that innovate and lead healthy, sustainable, ethical and affordable food approaches through the breadth of the city. To create a circular economy and a culture where local, small and independent businesses are supported and celebrated to encourage all businesses in the food system to become real living wage employers where there's a certain level that's been worked out what pe that people can afford to help people afford to live um, and model good workplace practices um, so that the sector become known, becomes known for good jobs and supporting innovation opportunities in the food sector. And then secondly, developing good food skills. So working with the food sector to understand the interventions needed to support an education and skills pipeline that will support a healthier and more sustainable food system in the city. To work with education providers to understand the needs of the food system and encourage the support and support local people to enter the food sector and maximize the potential of national schemes such as apprenticeships to enable entry to the food sector employment for disadvantaged groups. And as we were in the process of writing this strategy and thinking about the actions, we held um, an action planning workshop for people who are key stakeholders in food economy and Sorry. employment. Sorry, um, Dr. Jenkins. I'm yeah. sure you can't see the chat. Um, so you've got one minute left in there uh, okay. within your allocation, if you can be able to sum it up. So yeah. and, and then we'll be able to share the presentation like we will with the rest of the speakers. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Um, so just, well, I'll, I'll skip over that, but we just had some interesting kind of actions suggested by stakeholders in the group. 
And so finally, just to talk about, um, we've talked about the different nine work streams, but only one of them specifically being about the food economy. Um, but actually, we wanted to ensure that the food economy is embedded across all nine work streams, and also that there's a citywide lens to the action. So we're making sure that we're doing actions in all different sorts of environments. And so you can see that concepts of the food economy here have been embedded through a number of areas, particularly on the with the focus on food businesses and supply chains, um, but also some of the other things you can see, although I haven't listed all of them. And just very quickly to finish off um, with some first steps. So we've been engaging different businesses here um, in order to kind of start this approach. So things like Birmingham Wholesale Market and um, Minor Weir and Willis through it in the supply chain. We've also been engaging um, business improvement districts and other people who look at their kind of local food economy and just the local economy in general, uh, making the most of the opportunities that the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games gives. Um, for example, um, in this uh, hosting this two day sustainable food and drink event ahead of the Commonwealth Games that we'll be able to contribute to. Um, engaging with um, the Nationwide Caterers Association who represents street food and things like that. And finally, just making the most of um, the funding for the Childhood Obesity Trailblazer program that we have here, um, which includes um, doing a kind of system exploration, working out what the skills gaps are for food businesses to provide healthy and affordable food, um, and also through um, creating a planning toolkit so that we can plan more healthily for the food economy. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jenkins. I think that was um, a lot of information. Um, and it's very informative and I think we'll actually get a better appropriate time to read it outside of this and I think even more questions or comments might be triggered even beyond this platform and it's greatly appreciated that if we can all be able to, to interact even outside of the specific workshops, I think there's rich information that we can all be able to glean from this and as we are trying to recover in terms of time, um, we're going to move over back to India again, uh, to the city of Rajkot. Um, we have Mr. Amit Arora, who is representing the city of Rajkot. He's the commissioner uh, in the Rajkot Municipal Corporation. He has a BTEC in computer science um, and also an MTEC in computer science. Um, he's been involved um, in leadership in the city of Rajkop, taking various leadership roles in terms of resilient initiatives, the fight of climate change, including the development of um, dense urban forests just to restore uh, climate into the city. So without further ado, we'd like to hand over to you, sir. And also if you can be able to assist us and stick within the 10 minutes allocated for presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Aurora. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, pres I have a small presentation if it's visible. Yes, you, 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 you can put it up. Hmm? Just to say, I've just made you co-host, so you should be able to share your screen, but I do have a backup version if you would rather I shared it on your behalf. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I just, uh, sticking to the time constraints, I just quickly over to a few salient points of what we here in Rajkot have been doing our bit to make our city more food safe for the people of the city. Uh, Rajkot is the fourth largest city of Gujarat. It has over uh, about 2 million of population. It's a very festival loving, very vibrant city. And it is the business and the economic capital of about 13 districts of Gujarat. So why that is important is because it has a lot of floating population, a lot of people who daily move from rural areas to the city. and to cater to them, a lot of street side, low cost food joints have sprung up, especially if I would say in the last 10 years. And when we talk about food safety, I think the local food options, the low cost food options, the, uh, the street side food options, they pose a major challenge to the city. Uh, we have been working on food safety for almost 
half a decade now where it has been on our prime agenda on our main agenda we have a full department here dedicated to food safety so i just quickly uh, uh, specify as to what are the fields we are working in so rajkot has been famous for a very strong licensing and registration regimes we have a, a very strong team which uh, does surveillance drives sampling analysis of sampling and then uh, a proper uh, adjudicating mechanisms penal actions for the same just to give an idea of the scale of what, at which we are working in the last 6 months we had had about 400 food samples about 1.5 million rupees worth of food fines we have had about 1000 moving surveillance drives of samples uh we have a very strong benchmarking and certification regime especially fssai standards our own licensing is very strong here and gradually along with it we are trying to provide a suitable environment a sustainable environment to the new joints the low cost joints that have been coming up so for the past 5 uh, years i would say that a lot of uh, emphasis has been there on low cost food infrastructure creation which can refer to local food markets which can refer to uh, places where we allow people to sell their produce especially people from the adjoining rural areas who come we have been uh, aggressively financing uh, with the support of the state governments uh, infrastructure the backbone chain infrastructure that can lead to delivery of food in a more healthy in a non uh, non contaminated manner that includes cold storages safe houses the intermediate storage infrastructures they have been aggressively being financed under various schemes uh, we have been engaging with a lot of our stakeholders we have been engaging with the schools we have been engaging with even religious leaders with places of worship as to highlight the importance of what food safety is all of all about what the standards are and potential the the potential health and the consequent economic benefits as in the cost of treatment etc that a sustainable food environment can assure to a society and an economy as a whole so i mean i think i have already stated we have a skilled food safety team we have high surveillance in fact this year we have started mobile testing vans we have been facilitating the fbos the food business operators in registration and licensing especially the uh, women entrepreneurs or the women uh, small and medium enterprises we have been giving them tax rebates in property taxes if the property is or the business is owned by a women we have been giving no loans under nulm so somehow traditionally in india the food society has been more women centric and so we are trying to in, uh, in indulge as many women food entrepreneurs as possible into the process we have a unique concept of one week one road in which every week we pick up one street and somehow we try to face lift the street that also includes uh, uh cleanliness drives that also includes the checking of the food samples we have a uh, dedicated call centers for food related complaints especially related to adulteration related to overpricing related to uh, uh bad quality uh we have been aggressively following media campaigns we have been aggressively following iec campaigns to create a culture in which the public suo moto demands a uh, good food so moto understands the importance of uh, the importance of uh, healthy food the importance of hygiene and somehow uh, we have been focusing i think a four pronged strategy as far as food safety is concerned and especially when we talk about the environment that the food units are located in so sanitation water lighting waste disposal i mean these are four major components on which our food streets our hawker zones are keeping at the core of it so 
uh, as far as next years are concerned where do we see ourselves yes we need more licensing more registration we need lower percentage failure of food samples i think in the past two years uh, ever since we started aggressively pursuing the uh, drives the food sample failure rate has dropped from 12% to 8% and somehow we are hoping that within next two years we are able to bring it down to 5% below 5% we have been creating uh, a, an ecosystem where we are uh, trying to enforce fssai registration in all the items that are being sold even on street side uh, uh, street side markets uh, we have confiscated i think in the last year close to 9 tons of food material we have been promoting local foods the fortification campaign that was taken up in a big way we also included the local food business operators the hotels into it we have been strengthening the mid day meal and icds that is the integrated child development schemes where we provide nutritious food to children below 6 years of age so uh, we have been uh, joining hands with a number of ngos a number of donors to somehow provide fortified uh, mid day food to school going children and uh, young girls about of 13 to 16 years of age uh, we have been creating local food infrastructure especially the concept of a hygienic food street where we try and aggregate local food sellers that sell low cheap food but with a certain measure of checks in terms of sanitation the quantity quality of water being used the lighting being provided the waste disposal practices that are taking place so we are trying to rope in the local cheap food sellers into an integrated environment of a hygienic food street to deliver hygienic food to people to floating population at prices that at, that it is otherwise available uh we have uh sorry sorry mr arora apologies for breaking it just to remind you just you only have one minute left i'm I sorry like even if i send a, a message you you won't see it since you are projecting so just one minute left thank you i complete in less than a minute and uh, we have been promoting organic food because i think in food safety of uh, uh, organic food the benefits of organic food have been well known so we are we have been bringing the concept of organic food markets in which villagers who grow organic food with proper certification can come and sell it from the nearby villages i think more or less i have covered just that the idea is to reengineer the entire process of food licensing of on site assessment to make it more people friendly and create a demand for uh, better food safe food from people themselves so i think uh, again once again thank thanks to eat right challenge that we have been provided this platform and i think uh, uh, that's that's it from my side thank you Thank you very much, Mr. Arora, and thanks for representing the city of Rajkot. I think that was very informative, and would really appreciate to have a copy of it so that we can also have a look at it and then be able to see some things. Which, just because of time, um, you were forced to move a bit faster on it. So thank you very much. And I think um, as we enter now this stage, I think we've got a few minutes left. So we're gonna probably preserve like three, four minutes to some questions and answers. But um, maybe if maybe some hands can start uh, indicating those who would want to ask some questions or have any comments. But just for myself, I think just this, is demonstrating to us that we are at various developmental stages. If you look at the theme and the presentations and how they are focusing, because when we look, looked at the city of Pune, it was mostly about nutrition. Um, and nutrition was the main thing that was being developed just to get people into healthier diets so that at least you can improve the health around the society. And as well, if you look at the city of um, Zuzu, it was mostly about food security, making sure that there's more access to food. Um, when you look at Birmingham, it was more about sustainable production system, trying to make sure sustainability is becoming more commercial so that more private producers can be able to adopt such practices and ensure that we work with the environment. 
going forward. And as we've seen from the city of Rajkot, it's mostly about food safety, just to make sure that as much as we've got these various outlets, but do we have standards? Do we, do we certify people who are supplying these foods? So I'm seeing there's, um, I haven't seen hands, but I'm seeing a comment from Florence um, that is interesting to hear different contexts and challenges. And I think that's really a recurring theme. And I think as much as they sound different because they, they come from different cities, but I think all of us are facing similar challenges. And I think all of this will definitely richly assist us when we develop our city uh, food strategies. Um, what I will ask now at this stage, since I'm not seeing hands from where I am, I'm not sure if from your side, Florence, there are hands that you are able to see. Um, yes, you can have the floor, Florence, thanks. Um, yeah, I actually have a, a question, if, if that's okay with you. Um, yes. It was um, to Kathy. I was really interested by what you said about the growing population, meaning that there is um, less fish available um, and that the, um, the, the scarcity of fish is really pushing up the cost as well. Um, are, there any, um, are there any strategies or, or ideas around how to, to manage that and how to uh, manage the fish stocks and control the prices so that that, that is an accessible um, resource for the population? Uh, yes, yes, Florence. Uh, only that I'd learn out of time, but in our interventions, we have that strategy. Uh, we are working hand in hand with the Nzusu City Council. Uh, unfortunately, the mayor didn't join us today, uh, but um, when Mike was here in Malawi last two or three weeks, I think, uh, we are able to go and visit the location where the city has uh, reserved for fish ponds. So the city is actually planning to put a fish pond, not one, maybe two or three for a start, so that at least we can cater for the shortage of fish in, in the city. Uh, funds permitting, uh, it will be uh, taking off shortly. Thank you, that sounds really interesting. No. Thank you very much, uh, Catherine. Thanks for that response. And thanks, Florence, for that question. And I think also from my side, I think it comes to an end, my facilitation, just to say thank you to all the speakers and thanks to all the attendants uh, for your time and your patience. Um, also, apologies to the speakers. I know probably we might have rushed you for time. Apologies for that. Uh, but I'm sure we will improve as we go with time. So from this moment, I would like to hand over to Charlene, and then she can be able to guide us towards the closure and the way forward. Thank you very much. Thanks, police. Thank, and thank you, Wuyo, for such an excellent start to um, this series. Um, for us, it's very important now that we step off the stage and the cities are given the stage to start chairing, facilitating, facilitating and presenting. This session has been recorded and I'm going to suggest to Florence that we forward it to our bigger network. So that's 800 delegates who have participated, 800 in the network who have participated in previous webinar series so they can see where we're at as a partnership. Um, and the other thing is now um, the other cities will get a chance to present in the coming weeks. Um, so we'll, Florence will be in touch to start coordinating those sessions. Um, the key thing is, if as, as far as possible, to stick to time. Everyone provided exceptional, rich information. Um, as long as people are happy, um, we will facilitate introductions. So, for example, I know in Mizuzu, um, they want to do a goat project, and this is also a feature of Pune's work. So there may be a useful conversation there. Um, so we would like to start encouraging one-to-ones um, and exchanges between yourselves too. Um, we are also now coming, to, coming up to finalize the plan for um, day one of the two-day event over the summer. Um, and I have now finalized the list of everybody who is due to travel to Birmingham and potential speakers as well. Um, so you'll be hearing from the events team that I mentioned that in the um, in an email, I think last week. 
Um, for the Indian cities, um, it will be Ruchika and FSSAI who will continue to act as the intermediary and share communications that way. It's um, just because they're exceptional at communicating with you and um, I think that's more efficient. Um, so um, thank you once again. Um, Florence, did you have anything to add? Or Ruchika, Inoshi, did, did anyone want to add anything before we say goodbye? No, nothing from me. Thank you very much, everybody. Ruchika, I just saw you. I think not really at this stage, but uh, I would like to thank Food Foundation and all the members for organizing such interesting sessions. It was really good to hear from other participants as well today. And in the coming series, we will, we will be soon hearing more from Indian cities who will have a wider perspective. Cities will also gain from you know several other international initiatives and they will certainly add more to their food policies. So really look forward to that as we move forward in the coming sessions. Okay, well, thank you and have a good evening or a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.